Yeah, I wanted to start with you first. You've had such an illustrious career in this industry. And as it's, as it's progressed, you've said it's about the people that you're working with and the message of the project. What was it about this creative team and the themes of Academy that resonated with you? Hmm, that's a really, that's a funny question because um, I, I never actually like met anybody that we were just talking about this. I had never even met the people that I was like in the scenes with while we were doing the show. Um, so I really just trusted, I guess, in the creative team and the, um, the whole like message of the project, the, the show was really fun. It's, it's mysterious, it's juicy. And like, it's just a really, I feel like a gripping, uh, story mm -hmm. to listen to, you know, about your day as it's an audio series. And I think that's what, um, really, I guess, got me excited about the idea of doing the show. Mm -hmm. Great answer. And JJ, your voice has been so instrumental throughout your career. How have your experiences in musical theater and your training lent themselves to the podcasting world and your work uh, in Academy? Um, yeah, I mean, this was, I think for all three of us, this was like our first podcast, like audio experience like this. I think Stephanie, you said you've done some voiceover work, um, but I had never done anything like that. You know, I'm so used to stage. So everything is like very loud over the top and stuff. So sometimes it was good to, you know, get some direction and like bring it a little bit more intimate and like also just like be really, really present. You're in a booth, it's a small space. And um, Stephanie actually said this in another interview, but you know, like creating the environment with your voice is very interesting because yeah. you're not in a visual medium in this way. So, I mean, I think hopefully my training and all that stuff like helped me um, with all that. But I also think sometimes present some challenges with mm -hmm. TV film and any intimate setting. So it was cool to um, to like work through that and like find find more of a grounded um, one on one kind of experience versus a theatrical one. Yeah, great answer. Robbie, throughout your career, you've attached yourself to projects that have created this lasting impact on audiences. What was it about Academy and Caden in particular that excited you as a storyteller? And how much of your young fan base goes into consideration when you're figuring out what you want to be a part of? Yeah, I think this this one really stuck out to me uh, because I've wanted to do a scripted podcast for a long time. Um, I have a few kind of colleagues that work with in the past that are in this world and, and they just talk about how fun it is and how creatively freeing it is there's actually a lot you can do uh, on a much smaller budget with mm -hmm. podcasts so um i was really excited to to join one um and yeah like you say that the ya element of this is uh i think it's gonna be yeah great like really resonates with you know kind of my fan base and some of the some of the things that they know me from so um as soon as as soon as uh i saw this and read the script it was like this is very much in the ballpark um and yeah it was it was i surprised myself with how much fun i had with this so. mm. yeah and it's definitely a character like amber could easily be one-dimensional but as the series goes on we get to see the different layers to her and her insecurities which you brought so much depth to as an actress how did you create the space for yourself to dive into those more vulnerable traits and these moments um i mean really though it was uh it was easy because it was all in the writing, you know, uh, they did a really wonderful job with even in this medium, like making each character so layered and um, with the way that it's like revealed throughout the season. I mean, the the series, as you as you mentioned, um, I feel like that's kind of all it's really attributed to. And it, it was really kind of easy to take that lead and um, kind of go with the flow as the layers were being revealed of her. Robbie, similar to Stephanie's character, there's more that meets the eye when it comes to Caden. Were there particular techniques that you've lear learned from your work in film and television that lend themselves to this process? Were there new ones that you developed for this particular medium? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's first scripted podcast uh, experience, so there were there were a lot of new things. Um, but uh, really early on in my career, um, I did a couple of uh, dubbing sessions, uh, so uh, for actually for, for foreign language series and they needed English dubbing uh, back when I lived in the Czech Republic. So when, from when I was really young, I, I had a bit of experience in the movie, in, in the movie, in the uh, in the audio booth. Uh, so it was fun to kind of uh, go think back to those projects. And I think one of them was called like Cecile and Pepo at the Olympic Games. And it was these two little characters that were you know, participating in all of these different disciplines. And it was like a, 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 a I think it was a Czech children's show. Um, so it was, it was fun to, to remind myself about, 
about that and um and yeah dive into some new techniques as well like um like pretending to uh you know to have a sex scene over audio <laughs> over and over and over again was very strange <laughs> <laughs> you know, JJ, in the first few episodes, Noah appears to be this ally and guide to Ava. Who were the people in your own life who shaped the storyteller that you are today? Ooh, what a great question. Um, I mean, I feel like the easiest answer is that my family, like, I know this sounds so, well, not, not weird. It's just, it is what it is. My sisters growing up, they all, um, did theater growing up and my parents actually had like a theater company when I was really, really young. So I was never like old enough to do it at the time, but all three of my older sisters all did theater and I would go and see their shows. And I was raised around that. Um, and literally like in a playpen as a toddler and like in rehearsals and being surrounded by music and dance and art. Um, I genuinely think that's a huge reason why I went into it and also really specifically went into theater because of the community, because I really, that's like, those have always been my people. And it was just like a no brainer that that's like who I wanted to spend my time with um, and my career with. So I think my sisters um, are a big part of that. And obviously like my professors in, in school and um, in high school who like encouraged me to go for it. They definitely helped shape that a lot for sure. Robbie, you've also been so open about the ups and downs of this industry and the importance of diverting yourself as a storyteller. How's the podcasting medium changed the landscape for actors like all of you? All of you. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's just a, another way to work, really. Uh, I think, you know, all of us want to be kind of working actors and, and sort of do what we love for a living. And I think it's really important to have consistency in that because it's it's very difficult, I think, for a lot of uh, of actors to you know to to find that work um it's an incredibly competitive industry so something like the, the you know the podcast medium suddenly coming coming up as a viable option uh for work is really exciting and i think it's just another string to a lot of people's bow um and you know really low cost way to test out ip and uh to to, to delve into new characters and new stories mm -hmm. without kind of attaching a, a major budget to it you know, the barrier to entry is a lot lower with something like this. So uh, I, I think it's brilliant. And Stephanie, so much of acting is reacting to what your scene partner is giving you. And like you were saying earlier, you didn't meet any of the cast. How challenging was it to adjust to that lack of visual uh, aspect? And what was that process like? Mm -hmm. Um, Honestly, it wasn't too challenging. It was a really fun experience. We, they definitely fed us the lines and different, you know, voices. So I definitely had something to play off of at times, but it really didn't feel like as challenging as I would think now that I'm thinking about it, you know, like having to do an audition with nobody there or something mm -hmm. like it was kind of just fun to kind of tune in and be in your own world and just get into character um, as again, the, the story is so like juicy and fun and it was almost kind of more freeing not being seen because I really felt like I could just be free and go for it and kind of be as, as wild as I needed to be. Great answer. And this is a question for the entire group, but you know, the industry is ever evolving and podcasting is a relatively new medium. As you've brought the story to life, has anything surprised you about this overall experience? What have you learned that you're not going to be able to bring to your work on the on screen and on the stage? JJ? <laughs> Y'all tossing it to me? Um, okay, so yeah, I think, um, I mean, I learned a lot. Like, I mean, even just what Robbie said made me laugh because like literally like having like straight up sex scenes like via audio and you're like, whoa, what is this? And just like all of those kinds of things where you're like giving different sound effects and all that, it's just a different way of using your voice. Um, and it's a different way of, of storytelling, literally. So I think I will be taking a lot of this into it. I mean, I already noticed a difference because like I'm doing Back to the Future right now. We yeah shows in like two days on Broadway, which is crazy. Um, so I'm a little crazed right now, but I cover the lead Marty McFly and we had to record like four or five different lines and all these different versions of sound effects for them to use when like the car is crashing when we're doing all this stuff. And I was like, oh, I just did this for this podcast series. So mm. I've already found myself using some of the tools that I've learned. And like, hopefully it's the first of many, because I think this is an industry and a medium that could really take off and could kind of have a yeah. resurgence after like the radio shows. Definitely. Robbie, Stephanie, do you want to add anything? 
Yeah, I mean, I I would do it again. Um, yeah. After this experience, I loved it. Um, I loved it. Uh, the fact that you can kind of do work on an entire series or an entire season in just a day or two days mm. uh, is fascinating to me. Uh, and seeing it, seeing how it's all kind of come together, has kind of shown me how viable that is and feasible it is. So, um, yeah, I mean quite simply it was so much fun I'd, I just want to do more so I, to, I totally agree with um, both of y'all I definitely think um, yeah it's a cool exercise in a way where you know a lot of the times we would just have a line and do a b and c so you just do three mm. takes same line in a row do each one in a different way and I feel like the more I did that the more you know you just try a bunch of different things and see what sticks and um that's definitely something that's fun to take into screen acting as well. Just being kind of a bit more like on your toes, ready to, to ready to try anything, just spit out a different version of it.